what makes you the real actress? Mm -hmm. Because you went to acting school. If anything, I would argue that that... Makes you fake. <laughs> yeah, like you tried a little too hard. That's <laughs> something that came very naturally to me. Welcome to Popcast Deluxe. You are straight out of Castello Norado of Weekly Cultural Review. I'm John Caramonica, a critic at the New York Times. I'm Joe Coscarelli. I'm a reporter at the New York Times. And I'm Julia Fox, that girl. No arguments there. This week, big guest episode, uh, Julia Fox, on our original list. Like, what people don't know, when we started this, yep. we had a wish list. Yep. A, about a year ago, we yeah, started yeah. this show. Wish list. And we Julia said, Fox, yeah, you, you might have been, like, it was like Barack Obama, Julia Fox. No. Yeah. It was like no, our No, genuinely. Guests. That's amazing. <laughs> because for us, we want people who touch various corners of culture. Yeah. We want people who show up in a lot of places who can talk educatedly and informedly about a lot of different stuff um, so right off rip phenomenal yeah and your resume has only gotten longer <laughs> in the in, year in that the we've been doing this show i know That's um crazy so you've been doing your fashion show on e you're a video podcast veteran mm -hmm. we'll get there uh you have a new song yeah down the drain named for the title of your memoir yep uh came out last year and recently appeared in the music video for Charlie XCX's mm -hmm. 360 as that girl. Yeah. Right? I mean, <laughs> I'm like, that girl. <laughs> so all these things are connected, but you seem to have been doing music lately. Like, first, just give us the backstory of the Charlie song, because she also mentions you mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. track. You're just looking at me. I'm everywhere. I'm so jilly. Did you know her previously? How did she play this for you? You know, I think that she had already been working on this song when we were still kind of just like acquaintances. Okay. But I always knew that she, you know, thought highly of me because, you know, she would say it in interviews mm -hmm. and stuff. And I re would reciprocate because I've always been a huge fan of her. Like, I think she just makes people feel good. And that's amazing. And um, I also just like love British girls. Like, okay. they're really down to earth they don't take themselves too seriously they have a really good sense of humor whereas mm -hmm. i feel like americans are a lot more sensitive and like passive aggressive like british people kind of just tell you what it is and, okay you know like even the way they talk to each other they'll be like yeah <laughs> you know it's like if they did that here it'd be like oh, you want to fight you know like it's just like right. the also the fighting in in england doesn't actually have anything to do with how they talk to each other they're, yeah, just, yeah, fighting. Yeah, yeah. they're just fighting they're for just it. fighting for fun, for fun. which it's is important. also it's such a vibe yeah um tell so us anyway i loved her and she told me she was gonna shout me out in this song and and then asked me to be in the video and obviously i said yes <sighs> what about her huh? Oh, Charlie, that's that's literally Julia Fox. Yeah, sorry. Did you know it was going to be this table full All star of, team. Yeah, yeah, like a... I didn't really know anything. Through the, through the years. Yeah, I didn't know anything, but I was, you know, I trust her. I trust her vision, and whatever she wants to do, I'm, I'm down. So you didn't, like, show up to the table, and you're like, oh, I'm beefing with... Uh -oh. so and so no, <laughs> no. No, no no i don't and i like don't beef with girls like okay. girls can beef with me but i'm not gonna beef back with them like it's no was I there anyone that. in that video because obviously over the years i'm sure you've had opportunities whether I know it's to work with them. right yeah. is there a particular person or or one or two people who you were like i'm so relieved to see that person here that's or that person makes me feel um, much more comfortable about this entire well, i love experience. chloe cherry i had her on my podcast yeah, sure. like two years ago um i love rachel senate we both had our big breakout roles in the same year mm -hmm. and i forgot what mm -hmm. award show we were at but we like met at that award show and we were both like you know just nobodies at the time and so it's really cool to meet there and then meet again you know now that we've both come so far and that's always really amazing. Um, I love Gabrielle. Mm -hmm. I've been a huge fan of hers. I mean, every, you know, obviously Richie Shazam, mm -hmm. but you know, but that's, like, that's my best yeah, yeah. So, oh, Richie, like, you know, that's a given. Um, but like, yeah, everyone was amazing. And then, Cl and then the Chloe, Chloe shows up, right? Yeah. As the sort of. Well, I wasn't there that day. Oh, it was a different oh. day. Yeah, yeah, different. She wasn't at the table. Yeah, with you. so a right. lot of the girls I didn't even 
see uh, it all. Right. But it's still cool to be in the same video. Do you think in terms of lineage? Because obviously one of the things about that video that really jumps out at me is it's really there's your timeline. There's your lineage, it girl lineage timeline. Yeah. So when you're looking at yourself as part of that, how does it like how does it make you feel? Do you look at someone from the Chloe Seventy generation and think like, okay, that's a path for how I can be in the world, how I can move through the world? Yeah. It's cool. I mean, I think I think Chloe was like, you know, one of the first like it girls that could be represented on the internet, you know, because kids was such an amazing mm -hmm. movie and you know, to be even in the same conversation as an icon like that is like were you thinking of yourself that worthy? way? <laughs> even, but even before this video, were you thinking of yourself with all the sort of steps that have led up to this? I mean, as I don't like know. a role I, model type I thing? always kind of like just thought of myself more as like an anti it girl. Mm. You know, like I don't want to conform to like, I don't know. I'm, I'm just, I'm very like low key anti establishment mm -hmm. and I don't like those like terms that can be coined and just like used to sell something. So I feel like I'm an anti it girl. But it, okay. Mm -hmm. But still an it girl, nonetheless. Right. You can't. You can't That's, fully run from. No. The yeah. Title. They can't beat the yeah. it girl allegations. But no. you do yeah. like you do have like a bob and weave quality to your career. Like I feel like a lot of people were first introduced to you through Uncut Gems. Mm -hmm. I told you about how things were gonna go. You like the way things are going now? That's my Whoa. family. Book comes out a couple years after, and it seems like every time you like almost get like too big then you swerve again and yeah. like and now we've landed at this music moment like has that been a conscious effort to avoid like quote unquote going hollywood or definitely following mm -hmm. a, whatever yeah. the path set for you by like a boardroom of agents and managers definitely. like what because i think i just always want to be like more underground or yeah. like that's just my that's where i lean because that's what i've always been you know kind of like in on the fringe and like in my own little subculture and not really like the mainstream doesn't speak to me and I don't think I speak to the mainstream like I just don't think we're each other's audiences you know but there was definitely a moment where it seemed like you could have gone in that direction like I'm thinking of like a band or a pop star like do yeah. I sign to a major label or not yeah. like were there people who sat you down Always. and said like we can make every you day. the next yeah, like here's the every three-year plan if you want it yeah. basically every day yeah yeah like start, well, start a makeup line I'll invest in your makeup line I'll invest in your clothing line and it's like I don't want to be out here selling to people in a world of like overconsumption and waste and you know just it, it just doesn't inspire me that's not what I am I'm an artist and I'm a tortured one at that and I'd like to remain that way <laughs> you also say something in the book that um I think it's maybe when you're telling your mother that you get the part and that you'd gotten the part in Uncut Gems and you're sort of like, I'm going to be famous. And then you sort of, as an aside, say, like, I'm kind of like a hood celebrity already, yeah. but like, this is different. Yeah. As that arc was happening, and then you're going into the rollout of the movie and the press and all that stuff, what was the sort of point where you realize like you're maybe less tethered to that grounding level of like, local celebrity hood celebrity like the people's champ when right. did that st when did you start to feel distant from that i don't I'm, i don't feel it distant never from went that at all you no. never felt like you got pulled too far away or like no. it was slipping away you're like who like, am i and where am i no really i'm i'm in new york in the <laughs> yeah. street. you're outside no they love me here mm -hmm. I, can't, I literally can't walk down the street so mm -hmm. was yeah. there were there offers like in the uncut gems aftermath like that were tempting to you to like well i don't know if you remember but the pandemic happened yeah. right a month after okay Uncut gems came out right so anything that i had on the table went away for two years and then i had a baby right and then i was kind of like couldn't travel couldn't sure. do anything so that's when i started the podcast because i like needed something to do where I could be like safe and i wouldn't be contaminating anybody or putting my child at risk sure and then so the choice was sort of made for you yeah but that it was changed everything right but it was the choice you would have made anyway you think no because i had moved to la right after uncut gems and we had all these plans and i was going to do all these things and then in march or february or whenever it was when like i think everything 
shut down in February, but then it officially shut down in, in March. Like, sure. In March, yeah. Yeah, then I just came back home and got pregnant a month later. What do you think that sliding doors moment would have been? Like, what did you foresee for yourself? You know, I don't know, but I'm so happy it went down this way because mm -hmm. I'm so happy I chose to become a mom right then and there because really it would have been the only time that I could have dedicated to doing it and doing a really thorough job at it because right. I had nothing else going on, whereas now I'm traveling every other day and, you know, it's a constant headache of, the travel plans for the baby, getting the nanny for the baby. But your your son appears in your new music video. Yeah. Do you try to keep those parts of your life no, separate? Or no, no. I, I think that he, you know, I here is, you know, I feel like parenting in America is like, it's like, uh, it's really separate. Whereas like in Europe, for instance, it's very normal for a child to go everywhere with their parent, even if it's out late at night or even to a bar, it's not considered like, you know? Sure. And I feel like I want my child to be involved in all areas of my life. So any anywhere that I can squeeze him in, I put him in. And okay, I think so it's also good for him to like have that life experience and to feel comfortable and, you know, it's just, it's, it's like, why not, right. you know? Okay, it's so enriching. I'm, I'm, I'm taking notes. I'm doing no iPad yes bars. Yeah. Yes That's bars. The, the Julia yeah. Fox <laughs> Well, it depends what bar. Yeah, you know? it depends the best bar. If it's like the a finest. cute little tapas yeah. wine bar, sure, it's fine. But if, you know, obviously don't take them to the box. Like, <laughs> yeah. Babies at the box. No. Babies at the box, no, don't do it. Don't uh, I do mean, it. there definitely are babies at the box, but they're like <laughs> yeah. grown men dressed up in like a diaper. <laughs> Yeah. Um, Do you feel like parenting and motherhood changed your relationship to adventure and impulsively going after? Because one of the things that comes up over and over again in the book is a willingness to sort of be like, I don't know where this road's going to go, but yeah. we're, we're getting in the car and we're going spiritually or metaphorically. Yeah. How did parenting evolve that in you as a person? I have to get my kicks some yeah. way, you know, like I don't party anymore. I don't, I'm literally with my kid 24 seven. So, you know, I have to get my thrills through working. And so I always, I'm always trying new things. Sure. And I never want to limit myself, but obviously now like, I have to remain grounded because I have responsibility. A, a yeah. human that depends on me. Yeah. So I can't just like disappear for you know, or like go on a crazy road trip or move to the bayou or whatever I've done in the past. Like I can't, obviously, can't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. When you were putting all that stuff down in the book, I mean, one of the things, obviously, you've been documenting things for more way before this book. You've been documenting things for a long time in your life. When you were sort of doing all the recollecting and putting it all here. Did your perspective being five to 10 years older, looking back on some of that stuff, did your perspective change on it? Did you feel wistful? Did you feel regretful about how did you view the events that you're talking about? I don't really regret anything because I'm a very big believer in like your path and your journey and your fate. And like, I always say that like out of the most horrible things, like the most beautiful things are mm -hmm. born. So anytime anything happening to me I know that once I have more pieces to the puzzle and I see the bigger picture it'll make sense you know and I also think it's good to just have something to push against you know like it's good it, it gives if you're handed everything all the time like it just kind of like makes life less desirable to live because mm -hmm. you're not like for me like I always have to prove something and that's what I'm pushing against so that's why maybe I do the most or like I mean whatever, but that's just what keeps me going. But also it comes up, it does come up a few times in the book how you're sort of, you'll have these encounters where you're like, I think these people, whoever they are, are not gonna like me. Yeah. Or no one's gonna show up to the art gallery opening yeah. or so on and so forth. And then time and time again, you're proven wrong. Yeah. And I'm sort of surprised because I would think certainly, like you say, like the queen of downtown, like, you yeah. know what I mean? At some point, maybe you would think, okay, they will show up. Okay, they do like me. I don't but think that those hasn't, voices that hasn't ever sunk go in. away. Really? No. Like, I still get stuff like that all the time. I just think, doesn't everyone, though, like, have the, like, little voice in their head? Sure, that's sure. Like, or, like, suck. this time is going to be the fit. time yeah. that they know. You've gotten really lucky this yeah. far, but yeah. this time mm -hmm. it's over for you. 
like I it's irrational and I'll even be like no this is like super irrational and like the data proves that this is not possible you know but like you still think it I don't it's like childhood trauma mm -hmm. it's hard to undo that if that's like how you were always made to feel as like an outsider yeah. like the black sheep the underdog the like weird one whatever it's like it's hard to dismantle that. I think even you could have so much success and so much whatever, but I don't think that ever goes away. Do you feel that like as an actress now, do you feel like you're on steady footing? Like, are you going on auditions? Yeah. Are you no, like- No, I'm working a lot. I'm filming a lot of movies. Yeah, like do you yeah. feel like- I feel good. I feel like, I think for a while it got a little crazy and I got a little, I don't know. I feel, I didn't, I didn't like lose sight of myself, but like, I lost a lot of weight and I was just like, I think I was just on a spiral. Like I was unwell, you know, I was like mourning the loss of the relationship with my son's father. I was dating people that I shouldn't have even been <laughs> in the vicinity of. Like it was just, you know, and now I think I'm really back to a place where I feel like grounded again and I feel like, okay, I'm reprioritizing. I know what I want to do. Um, you know, I'm just like, you know, making more art, showing up for myself, eating properly, mm -hmm. sleeping properly, but. But acting is definitely part of that piece of a puzzle of yeah, what you want to do. So. Cause I think it's interesting, yeah. like it's such a difficult position I'd imagine to be in where your breakout role is playing a version of yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like that's one thing, like yeah. you're really good at being yeah. <laughs> Julia Fox yeah. and maybe a heightened version of yourself or a version of yourself from three years ago or whatever it was, mm -hmm. but there was a lot of you in that role, right? Yeah. Even though you you write it as you write in the book, like it's actually harder to act like what you think the director's version of you is. Right. Oh, that's you know? interesting. Yeah. Like yeah. it's it was actually like so much harder. I was like, it's like, wait, who do you think I am? Right. You know, because obviously it really wasn't the, me. Through yeah. The glass. yeah. So I mean it was definitely still acting and it was really it just felt so weird because it's like so close to home, but then again, also not. And it's just like a weird space to be in. But now you feel. Now I do. Like at the time I was like, I'm not worthy. And now I'm like, no, I'm definitely worthy. You know, just because I didn't get my um, practice in acting roles doesn't mean that I didn't get them out in the world in real life, right, which sure. I think is actually like stronger. What do you have coming up that you're really excited about? Like, I know. Well, I, I just got back from New Mexico last week. I was there for a month and shooting a film um, called Him. Um, and it's a Jordan Peele monkey paw production. Right. It's like a psychological horror thriller film based about based on like American football. Mm -hmm. And I play um, not the band. this aging at what? <laughs> not the band American Football. <laughs> no, is that a band? No, it's I don't like, know. I literally can't no, believe you said that. I, I actually cannot believe you said that. I, really, I couldn't help it. I couldn't help it. You know, uh, once okay. an emo kid, always an emo kid. I couldn't. Oh, yeah. I wow. never thought we would mention the band American Football on a podcast That's with funny. Julia Fox. Phenomenal. But, but here Great we are. Band. I love <laughs> that. Great I'll band. have to check them out. Yeah. I don't know. But but about about. A football player? Yeah, about like an aging out football player. I play his wife. Okay. And um, he's recruiting the next, you know, greatest of all time okay. football player. But there's some shady dealings going on with the franchise and you'll just have to watch it. What is it like to be on set now when you're not in the local scene? Like you're not with people you've known. Like you're not. I know obviously you've done stuff in yeah, between. Yeah, I've done other you, stuff like, where it wasn't. Like, I mean, nothing will ever be like shooting on Cut Jump, sure. you know, because I was really there with all my friends in front of the camera and behind the camera. And it just, you know, and even as I was filming it, like all the hair and makeup team were like, girl, this is not what it's like. So don't get used yeah. to it. Like, this <laughs> and, then, and then you're like, Steven Soderbergh, here I am. I'm Julia yeah, Fox. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like everyone could tell that there was a really special vibe and energy on the set. And everyone knew that the film was going to be huge. And it was, you know, right. um, so I'm still trying to like top that or sure. like be known for like something else mm -hmm. that isn't that. Um, but obviously it's so grateful. Like I'm so happy to be known for that. It's a huge honor. I've got to imagine in Uncut Gems on some level, you know, you're playing someone's version of you, mm -hmm. the real person, but then you're thinking, well, this version of me, many people will conflate with the actual me. Yeah. So you're being mindful and like sort of protective of the character maybe, and then yeah. also reverse protective of yourself. But if you're in someone else's vision altogether, it's probably more liberating, I would assume. 
think it's an evolution, but it, it still comes from the same place of just like wanting to release and, you know, finding different avenues, different channels to release. Um, I think in, in, the er, in the early aughts of my career, it was very much like unpacking and unloading my trauma. Yeah. Whereas now I'm just like so over my trauma and my shit. I don't want to hear about it. Like I'm just <laughs> no over it. Like there's got to be something more interesting, you know, even though somehow we always end up back there. I'm like, oh God, I've done so much since then. Um, so, you know, it's it's diff- it's diff- it, it is an evolution though. Yeah, I'm curious when you talk about, you know, the worst part of your life of being put out there in your work, like you were doing it on a level that was like for your friends or for your friends' friends or for your local community. And then you write a book and, you know, you obscure things a little bit, right? You, you're you writing about your time with Salem, but you're not calling them Salem. Mm-hmm. You're writing about your time with Kanye, but you're calling him the artist or, you know, you're changing some names and details. But all of this stuff like exists out in the world and you have such a fan base and such an un- online fan base mm-hmm. and so much of your life is online. Oh, there's that, like, a Reddit. That's yeah. what I'm saying. I literally yeah. was just going to say the Reddit's crazy. Yeah. yeah. yeah like Reddit, Reddit's people well. pull up, you know, They're scans. not like right about everything though. But okay. Do you want to correct anything while no, we're here? No. <laughs> but no. but they pull stuff up. Like I was on Twitter randomly, unconnected to this interview last week, and you're missing persons poster from when you're a teenager mm-hmm. and you run away and you tell that story in the book, but it's like floating like people have that and it's yeah. floating around online. Like, do you is that hard to deal with? Like as your star gets bigger, there's just more and more eyes on the stuff that you might have yeah. thought nobody would ever see. No. I mean, uh, sometimes I'm like, oh, God, you know, because you when you're putting out naked photos of yourself, but they're artsy, they're not porn. Sure. But if people have a really hard time differentiating nudity from porn. Right. Especially like stripped of their context. Yeah, you know? exactly. You definitely I definitely never. You know, I, 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 I don't want to say that I never thought that a wider audience would see it. I just don't, I think I was just so living in that, in the moment at the time, like really like survival mode day by day that I don't think I even, I didn't go there. And when people dig that stuff up, like, is it re-traumatizing for you? Can you laugh when you see your missing persons poster? I'm so like like, numb to it now. It doesn't have, it happened so often that it's not, maybe like in the beginning I might've been like, oh shit you know like my publicist isn't gonna like this you know right but now i feel like my fans know my tea and yeah they still love and accept me for it yeah there must be something and if anything i want them to see it you know because when you get to a certain point people are only seeing like your your pop shoots or whatever it is it's all glitzy and glammy and looks fun and colorful and poppy and you know i you know i still want them to know like hey it's not always sunshine and rainbows like like look at my old zine that yeah. somebody scanned and put on the internet oh my god don't don't look at yeah. it though yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah look at it cuz you know you you can see there's a real human behind all this i mean you it's know? your voice and yeah. there's i mean and and one thing i remember in the later chapter of the book where you're talking about the uh the early days with yay and you know, Ye calling Mel and the write-up and then his associate submits a different write-up and you're like, this doesn't sound like me. Oh. But it, but that but that scene to me is very much like, look, I am down to be documented. I'm available, like the public yeah. un- thinks they know me in an intimate and vulnerable way. But if it's going to happen here, it's got to be my voice. Yeah. It can't be your imposition mm-hmm. onto my voice. Is that fair to say? Absolutely. Yeah. I, I think at a certain point, it's like, I'm not gonna let you make me sound stupid, you know. Like I'll I'll walk away right now. Right. Like I'm not publishing that with my name on it. Like just no, you know. I could draw the line somewhere. Right. We're calling Mel. <laughs> yeah, we're call, we're exactly. Calling Mel. Don't run it. And that seems like it's part of that goes back to your point about you're an indie artist. You're not a mainstream artist yeah. like that, and you want that full creative control, not to people, not people to put absolutely to project their version of you yeah. on yourself? Like, mm-hmm. when do you feel like you fully wrestled back total control of your image? Was it after that paparazzi relationship? After, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Because, um, he, you know, it was actually a blessing that he came into my life because he kind of like 
shook up my team in a way where a lot of the creative control was then given back to me. Whereas I feel like for a couple of years there, even though nothing was really going on because it was the pandemic and whatever, but I would still feel this pressure to like pretend to be this like Hollywood starlet that I like wasn't. And I'd get into fights about it and be really upset about it, but then ultimately always concede and like just do what they wanted me to do because it was like easier than arguing. So after he came in and was like, wait a minute, no, f that, like, I'm going to do, he said, I'm going to do what I want to do. But then when he left, it was like, oh, wait, now I'm going to do what I want to do, mm, you know? Right. So, so you needed that hurricane I, to blow through to get rid of all the yeah. debris. Yeah. 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 And then you, you felt more empowered after that? Well, then I kind of felt like, oh, my God, the world is my oyster. Yeah. Right. You and know? you knew you didn't want to be anybody's muse. No, I'm my own muse. In, in, in the same way I'm my own muse, I'm also my own, like, downfall. And because really, ultimately, I can only do what I believe I can do. So when I don't believe in myself, I can't do anything and I'm debilitated. So it's both ways, you know. Um but yeah, after that, uh, you know, it was like the the doors had unlocked and and I just had so many more resources at my fingers, more people wanting to work with me, more designers willing to let me close. And and then just it became really fun. And then I had a, and then and then I then I started to hear this whole thing like, oh, well, she's only like, you know, killing it in the fashion because it, it's Kanye. It's Kanye. And I was like, right. no, these are my looks. I'm putting them together. Mm -hmm. And um so then I felt like that was what I needed to push against and prove that, that no, these are my looks, you know, I'm doing this. And I wasn't doing it before because my team wanted me to just look basic. <laughs> right. Because they had a vision, especially post on God Gems, where they were like, we can push you. We, we have a, yeah. uh, uh, a trajectory for yeah. you, which and was all like you the have to normal do is, route. Right, and all you have to do is just play along. Mm -hmm. If you just keep smiling, yeah. Wearing these looks, yeah. you're going to be fine. In ten, five, ten years, you'll be financially fine. You'll yeah. have a great career. We did our jobs. Yeah. That's what they're telling you. Mm -hmm. And you're sort of saying, like... It's not me. Yeah, just like, we <laughs> it's just, just can't not me. do it. Like, yeah. It's just not me. It felt inauthentic, and it didn't feel fun. And it's like, I don't want to do anything that isn't fun. I'd rather pack it up and just leave and go do something else. Do you love video podcasting? <laughs> 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 Are we getting no. more for the <laughs> No, I yeah. don't think. I mean, maybe. I mean, I loved working with Nikki Takesh, mm -hmm. my podcast host, but like it just got to the point where like I do not have time. One thing that that podcast I think was so effective at, I mean, you know, it's funny, we live in kind of like the call her daddy era or whatever, mm -hmm. but you, we all you live know, in the shadow. We all, it's, we're just here, yeah. just, you know, this, we're daddy to each other. <laughs> um, but doing that form of like intimate, vulnerable, confessional podcasting, but not on this kind of like mega level where it's like, oh, we have to get the biggest necessarily A-list mm. celebrity, but you're doing it and you're saying like, well, this kind of format actually works for like, like cool girls too. Like, yeah. like that to me was no, all No, our goal pointed. was not at all to get big celebrities. Right. And I think some people on the team that came on the team probably would have preferred that. But to me, that's freaking boring. Mm -hmm. Like I want Heidi Fleiss. I want <laughs> Courtney Love. Right? I want Dennis Rodman. <laughs> I want all, all A-list in their own <laughs> special Suzanne world. Barged. I want, like, I just want more niche, more cool, more underground, like more eccentric, more unconventional. I love people that have been canceled. Like I love. <laughs> Who's your favorite canceled artist? Um, Probably MIA, but we had her on oh, the pod. Oh, yeah. 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 Love her. I don't She's Grimes, so we had her on the pod too. Love her. Um, yeah, like I don't give a shit. Like that's just what I find interesting, you know? And it's like I'm not going to waste an hour of my life talking to someone I don't find interesting. Yeah, you want tension. Yeah. Um, okay, where does the music fit in? Like who came to you? So you're in the Charlie video, you have the Charlie song, you're at the Charlie Boiler Room. Yeah. <laughs> like, did all of that converge naturally or was this part of the plan? No, it was super, super organic. I was um, doing the book tour and I knew I'd have an audience. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the overarching message of my book is like, you can and should do whatever the hell you want. Change your mind, <laughs> change mm -hmm. path, make a detour, make a U-turn, like just 
up, be yourself, do what you want. And I thought, like, what is the best way to get that across other than to perform a song and, like, kind of play this, like, I'm in my pop star era now, you know, ha ha. Like, mm -hmm. it wasn't supposed to be, like, real. So my friend, Ben Draghi, who actually lives in my house, has a recording studio on the top floor, and we just kind of sat down for a couple hours, wrote out the song, kind of made a beat together, figured out the hook, the melody, boom, I left, he finished it, and, and then I performed it at the book event. And then he, and then Charlie heard it, I guess someone that was in the audience put it on TikTok, she heard it, she was having the boiler room event, and she, it was funny because she texted me like, babe, do you want to come to this event? The weather room. I was like, yes, of course, I'll be there. And then she texted me again a couple of days later, and she was like, we want to play your song. And I thought she meant just like my song, like what's my go-to club song. Oh, right. oh like, so like, what's your so jam? Like, I like, wasn't yeah. even, I was like, what? <laughs> so I was like, oh, Stiletto Pumps, Crime Mob. And then she's like, no, LOL, your song that you sang. And I You're was like, like, that's oh, me, shit. Stiletto Pumps. Right, like I just had forgotten, you know? And you then, for, you're doing so much that you forgot you had a pop song. <laughs> yeah, like I didn't even. It also, I just did it as like a fun thing for my like biggest fans that showed up to my freaking book tour sure. and bought a book. Yeah. Like it was just supposed to be for them. And now it's kind of spiraled and become this whole thing. But, you know, <laughs> it's like that's why I always tell people just do create art because even if you don't have a place right in the moment, the opportunity might arise even yet. Like I wrote a script seven years ago and we're just now developing it into a movie. So it's like, just do stuff. Keep creating stuff because it'll eventually find a home. Making art is like having little babies. And then they grow up and they go out into the world and they have their own independent spirit. And they like you'll be so surprised where they end up when they're out of your hands. And like just keep creating art. What's your script about? It's about two girls that accidentally kill their sugar daddy. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> yeah, it's so good. That's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Easy to drama or comedy is the real question it's like it's like a dramatic comedy Dr i would a say drama comedy, yeah it's, it there's were. some thriller-esque part nature to it it's definitely a very like high pressure very like you know things are happening really fast and mm -hmm. it's kind of kooky and all over the place but in a good way like You've the anxious girls will love it <laughs> <laughs> We'll be there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You've recorded more music since the first song? No. I've been okay. so busy, babe. Okay. Just, well, I I mean, but month. your producer, you live with your producer. <laughs> and I barely see him. Okay. <laughs> it is in a sort of proud lineage, I feel like, of kind of like it girls making songs. Or anti it girls. Anti it girls yeah. making songs. <laughs> Sort of like schooled in the Paris Hilton stars are blind. Oh my god, I Lindsay love Lou that had. album. Lindsay okay, put it out. all right. So we have a, we have a little playlist for you. Okay. Can we run through a couple of names and okay. just give a vibe? Do you want to yeah. hear the songs, or you probably know? I them? will say them, and if I don't know them, okay. So later. Talk, let's talk Paris Hilton stars are blind. Okay. This is probably. But the, the jealousy was a good one too. Uh, oh, jealousy. oh, you like wow, the deep cut? Jealousy. Damn, deep cut. Jealousy. Yeah. I mean, there's so many good ones. <laughs> yeah, like you, Paris, Paris Hilton to me is sort of like the Ne Plus Ultra yeah. of someone in yeah. this space making songs that in their specific moment when they came out, people were like, I can't believe this happened. And then five years later, everybody was like, well, that was a classic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was an absolute yeah. I have friends who, whose wedding song was Stars Are Blind. Oh, Just my kidding. God. That's amazing. <laughs> okay. So Paris, you're, uh, you're, you're all, all in on, on Paris. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. Lindsay Lohan rumors. Not as much of a classic to me. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to have to agree with you. On that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But you. we started high. With yeah, Paris. yeah. yeah. It's hard to top Paris. Um, where are you on Addison, the music career of Addison Ray? Who was at Love. the Boiler Room with Yeah. 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 Um, obsessed is the big single yes. from last year. You say you're obsessed with me. So I took a second and I said, Me too. I'm obsessed with me e -e as much as you. I still have me, I can't lose. But 
uh, to the person who sent me the zip file of all the like unreleased ads. Oh yeah, array. we have the leaked. We demos. have the leak. I got I got yeah. some leaks, and uh, they're good. Oh yeah, yeah. The Reddit like, is popping. Okay, just like, good, like good, your, good, like good, good. I'm glad. I'm glad. Yeah. I love that for her. Um, Kim Kardashian jam. You up uh, on this? I like it like ironically. <laughs> yeah, you know what but I you mean? remember it. Yes. You know oh my god. DJ play my jam. What, what was it again? <laughs> Something like I that. I mean, it's it's so bad that it's good. Yes. You know, yeah. written like, by the dream. No yeah. way. Yeah. Or early. Yeah. Wow. Yes. I mean, I love everything she does. So. Yeah. Who can? She killed who can it. Be yeah, it's hard to argue with. Yeah. Um, any of the Farrah Abraham music. Oh wow. Not up on Are you up on that? No. <laughs> play just play a little bit. I, of I, I'm actually that. more into her mom's rap career. Did you guys see that? <laughs> oh, is it that older blonde? That older... Yeah. Yes. That's her mom. Yeah. That's f***ing yeah. crazy. Uh, Just play like you play? Right, 20 seconds of After Prom. It's aging really well. Giving Gigi D'Agostino. I love yeah, Gigi D'Agostino. Yeah. It's pretty good. This goes. Like, this could fit in the Charlie Boiler room set. This could be this 100 Gex song. It is basically 100 Gex song. She was ahead of her time. Also, this is literally the art my teenage dream ended. <laughs> That's art. <clears throat> That's really art. Shout out to her. That's a masterpiece. Right. I'm yes. down. Yes. And the final one, Naomi Campbell. Do you know Naomi Campbell had an album? Love and Tears. Why is don't the I record. know this? Came Dude. out in 94. 94. Oh my God. Yeah. Okay. I was we still a baby. A full length so album. Know. As was I. John was in London. <laughs> I was, John was, I was 30, 30. Married to the kid. Probably. Um, um, shall we play just a touch yes, of yes, Love Yes, 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 please. Yeah. That is the choice. That is the 90s. That's good. This is really good, actually. <laughs> it's giving me like Madonna, Grace Jones, had a baby. Also, just that aesthetic, like the clean white tank yeah. top with the sort of slim jeans and a desert. Yeah. Like, can you think of a more 1991 the to nostalgia. 1994 Ugh. aesthetic? All right, the Renaissance. Cindy Crawford starts is watching this and now. Be like, how come nobody gave me this song? Wow. We're bringing <laughs> we're bringing this album back. We're gonna get it printed in like limited vinyl edition me, please. vinyl. You really we're gonna should. do like the fancy yeah. vinyl me please box. You yeah. really should. This Reunion a, tour. I'm gonna have to like post a TikTok video with this as the sound. Please do. And beat you guys but, to the punch. That's fine. That's because people why. need to know. To reach, people we're happy need to, to reach Like, and reach how did I not know? Um, this is our jobs. I'm wow. really glad we could Thank introduce you. you to the I'm gonna list, the literally listen career. to the entire thing. I love Naomi Campbell. She's ugh, a dream. Like just knowing that like all these people who came from outside the music world yeah. and one day woke up and said, Today is the day. I I'm become a pop star. Album. I make a pop I, you star. Know, I don't know what it is about, you know, because I feel like when you're an artist and you're creative, I think that that, go, like, you could put a bouquet of flowers in front of uh, flowers, and I will arrange it in my own unique way. Yeah. And you know what I mean? It's like you, uh, even if it's cooking, I will uh, make it in a certain way or like a, a way that is unique to my creative vision. So I think it's only natural that a creative person would try their hand at an, another art mm -hmm. such as music sure and you don't think it's like offensive to be a dilettante you know like oh uh, like real like you were saying real actresses would be like can't believe she got that role yeah. or real musicians would be like well then it's like well what makes you th the real actress because mm -hmm. you went to acting school if anything i would argue that that makes you fake <laughs> Yeah, like you tried a little too hard at, <laughs> at something that came very naturally to me. <laughs> You're like, I didn't need any yeah. schooling. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's so, great. Have you have you heard the remix of Down the Drain that is chopped and shoegazed? There's like a <laughs> I've club. heard so many okay. remixes, so one... I don't know if we're. 
talking about the same one. There's one I found that sounds like it would be right at home um, at John and I's favorite goth club, uh, The Castle in Tampa, Tampa, Florida. No way. Um, I don't know if you're familiar, but no. those, strong those, recommend. those boots would do well. Yeah, like castle. honestly, yeah, strong recommend if you're um, ever in Tampa. What, what is like, it called? The Castle? It's called The Castle. And, and it's a, in Tampa. They have a goth Oh, yeah, club. sure. Okay, I don't know the yeah. next time I'll, I find myself in Tampa. <laughs> You'll be I'll, surprised. Honestly, <laughs> maybe worth a trip. Worth a trip. We'll all go. Yeah. Maybe we book you a show there. It's yeah. a, okay. a genuinely okay. incredible nightclub. I love that. Um, um, but the, yeah, this 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 version would, would play go hard. There. Yeah. Okay, I had a question because we obviously we were talking a little bit earlier about media and like you know, in the yay moment you have this interview magazine moment. But I know the New York that you grew up in, downtown media, whether it's old interview, paper magazine, et cetera, et cetera. I wonder when you were in your teenage years. Was there stuff that you found yourself turning to and you were like, that's the Bible yeah. of the scene I want to be a part of? Yeah, there was a magazine called Misbehave. Oh, yeah, of course. And that was like the only thing I read. Yeah, shout out Mary Choi, former editor of Misbehave. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that mm -hmm. was the I feel like that's all me and my friends read was Misbehave. Great graphics, really great colors. <laughs> you, were, cool yeah, you were a little too young for sassy. Yeah. Right? Oh. And a little too... Before. You can say old. No, I was. I don't care. It's a badge of honor. Right. I love. I'm so here, so like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm it's old. Misbehave was, was your was your sweet yeah, spot. But that felt was. like it spoke to you, like. Yeah. And that was like that early moment where it's like streetwear, hype be streetwear it was culture, about but for girls, wear like, and drama, and I feel like there was like a little blog section too, where like some of the writers would like write their. I don't know. I can't remember now, but mm -hmm. that I remember like every day religiously, like coming home from school and oh, and going on misbehave. Were there other blogs and as as it things started to yeah, move more online, spaces. like were there websites and blogs or social pages that like that you got obsessed with in the same I way that really spoke to you? That was like the only one. I don't think I you know, I didn't like really live that much online. Right. Like I was very IRL at, in the streets at the mm -hmm. time. Yeah, you were busy. I really was. Like people were posting you on Tumblr. No, they but were. You weren't posting like I was all over last night's party sure. and yeah, sure. like all over all those like party sites. Like I was really just like out. The your BlackBerry Wi-Fi didn't work downstairs at Lit or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> at Lit Lounge. Did not, yeah. Couldn't no. get a signal at Lit. No, definitely not. We've talked about some of your biggest moments, but we haven't mentioned the apartment tour. Um, so we can start in my bedroom, which is the living room. So yeah, I put my bed here in the living room so I could turn my bedroom into a little playroom for Valentino. Um, I know I have that clothing rack there that I really need to get rid of. But anyway, yeah, this is Valentino, where Valentino hangs out. And, oh, this is my nostalgia mirror. Which mm. I feel like is another touchstone where a lot of people encountered you for the first time. Yeah. Uh, and were... I was not expecting that to be such a big deal. <laughs> yeah, and we're like, <laughs> but that's were why it became a big deal. I surprised think. and horrified and whatever. Like, there's something really New York about that, right? Yeah. Of you showing around your apartment and, and how you live and sharing room yeah. with your son and your clothes and yeah. whatever. Like, yeah. Like what, what was the aftermath of, of that? Like for well, you? Well, I think, I think it was actually probably a good thing that I did that because it re made me realize that like, Hey, like you don't need to be here anymore. You know, like oh, you can afford something better, but I think I just, oh, you really, moved out. yeah, I don't live there anymore. <laughs> um, but it was like, I got comfortable there. And also by New York standards, that's a pretty okay apartment. The location was prime. Um, I had everything I needed at my fingertips. All my friends were in that area. And I just, you know, you get comfortable. And also it's just so busy and it wasn't really anything I thought about. But I started to feel as I was getting, gaining more like fame that people had this idea of me that was like totally false. Like I was like an heiress or something. Mm -hmm. And I very quickly had to be like, no, I'm literally just like you guys, you know, cause I am. Um, and I, I don't know, I think people just, I think it, it became such a moment because I think people really did have such a false idea of who I was. But then when they were like, girl, you're in a movie with Adam Sandler. You're like, oh yeah, I, maybe yeah, I should I get a nicer that apartment. Much for that, you right, know? but, but like, you that's still... not where I made my money. But it, I mean, it was definitely the starting point to getting more jobs mm -hmm. and stuff. 
But you up, but you up, you upgraded. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But it sort of served inadvertently as a way to do the thing that you described yeah. very early in this conversation of like right sizing your fame, yeah. as it were, and kind of like saying anybody who thinks that I'm out here in the stars in the sky, yeah. like I'm right look here at my with mice. you. Yeah, I'm yeah, literally, yeah, right I, here I with literally you. yeah. I'm gonna walk up with a baby. I put a stroller. I have to say it's a lot of work, you know. Um, but yeah, it was it was definitely a, a good stepping stone. And I think also prior to that, I think I was just like, well, I grew up sharing a room with my brother on a bunk bed, you know, I was like, well, he has his own room, like we're doing great. And I think it was just like that mentality of like, you know, just because you didn't have the ideal situation, like it's okay to strive for more. It's okay to like want something better for yourself. And like, I'm just very humble vibes. Like I don't like, like, excessive displays of wealth like I said in that video mm -hmm. like I don't feel comfortable in like a Lamborghini I don't like I drive a Dodge Challenger which I think Great is car. a luxury car Great in my car. opinion sure. you know and love to rent a Challenger yeah frankly. they're the best, yeah, best Great. car ever yeah and like I don't know I just I, I feel like that's just not what's important to me like I don't I, I'm not having a d measuring contest with people over like all the nice things I have like I don't give a shit what? If that's how people measure their self worth, like get some therapy. <laughs> Fair For enough. that, or really ten other reasons, get yeah. some therapy. When you when you think about the evolutions in the city, and you think about kind of like what downtown quota is now, and that could be Dime Square, it could be Bushwick, it could be Ridgewood, whatever. Do you spend any time in those spaces? And if you do, does it feel recognizable to you, or do you think these kids are just on some other thing that I was not on? Um, you know, I, it's definitely different than from when I was in my, you know, mm -hmm. teens and twenties, like, like downtown was still kind of like the hood, you mm -hmm. know, like I feel like now it's kind of more like NYU town, like NYU has really expanded its campus. And to it Ridgewood. Kind of, it, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like literally. it feels like one big college campus in a way. Um, and you know, and that's great, and it's all fine and dandy, but I definitely don't feel like I really, like, fit in that much anymore. Mm -hmm. You're like, they're out here calling the West Village just West Village. <laughs> yeah. Like, what is happening? Oh You've seen God. that on TikTok? No. Oh, it's in, oh, it's bonkers. Like, I'm in West Village? I'm in West Village. <laughs> look at the, the look of horror I, on I, your face. I, yeah. The first time I saw someone do it on TikTok, I was like, I had to be a mistake. You know, it's like you see the yeah. first one, and you're like, ah, it's just this one person. By the seventh or ninth or thirtieth. Wow. Pray for the youth. Every episode of Popcast Deluxe is at youtube.com slash popcast. Every episode of all popcasts is at nytimes.com slash popcast. We'll be back next week. Let's go out with a remix of Down the Drain. Yeah, that's okay. yeah, no, we're gonna keep it raw. Let's do it.